Peace and welcome, brethren and guests. Welcome to the Israelite Nation Worldwide Ministry. Thank you for joining us for another Friday night Bible studies here at the Israelite Nation Worldwide Ministry. I'm Kwame and I'm from the UK branch. Today we have a very interesting topic matter to really discuss today. And I'm really looking forward to the discussion. We have a super panel of brethren all from the different branches of the Israelite Nation Worldwide Ministry. And they are pumped up and ready to get into today's discussion. But before we go into that discussion, please guys, don't forget to support our channel by subscribing, um, by sharing this video with your friends and family. And also, if you like the content, content, content of this topic matter, Please don't forget to smash the like button. Um, and if you're interested in joining um, the Israelite Nation Worldwide Ministry, there is a link in the bio. Please click that link and we will get right back to you. So let's get into today's topic matter. So let me introduce my panel. Um, firstly, uh, peace and welcome, Elder Avery, Hilaire, Jonathan, and teacher. Matthew, how are you doing, guys? Peace, 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 peace. peace. Thank, you. Thank you guys for joining this discussion. Um, I know you guys are really pumped up and ready for this today's um, discussion. Um, so today we have a very interesting topic, like I said, and it's all about witchcraft, right? Now, guys, I just want to ask you guys this question. Uh, what is your take on witchcraft yeah so yeah okay. if i can jump in there as well yeah, uh, Kwame. um when i think of witchcraft i do think of uh you know women mainly but i, I more importantly i think of uh just someone tapping into familiar spirits when you look up the etymology of the word you come up with words like chant or enchantment you come up with words like uh divination uh mojo it's really the worship of the dead. And they're, what they're really trying to do is prophesize. They're trying to make a prediction using stones, using tarot cards, using astrology, using uh, numerology. So this is a practice that Israel um, <clears throat> was forbade as we'll talk about in the scriptures, um, uh, was uh, told not to partake in, even um, to the punishment of death. So it was something that was definitely not practice. Um, one might even say an abomination to the God of Israel. Thank you, thank you for that, Elway. And, and from my understanding, it's not just only those things too, it's even idolatry as well, right? So they use these images to, um, in a way, partake in these rituals. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I kind of agree with Matthew uh, and here. Basically, you can see that witchcraft, it's a huge topic. It's a huge, huge topic that um, people that I think are blind, they think that they, they're doing such of things like, you know, but we as an Israelite, we know that it's a rebellion, you know, it's a rebellion against the God of Israel. Anything, nothing to do with the God of Israel, it's a rebellion and people don't see that way. They all think like okay witchcraft like you you mentioned kwame uh you go see the witch and do such a things no but it's it's a huge topic and our uh, our thing today we can demonstrate and most people are very blind and uh, as a news right this is a, a rebellion against our god and you can't yeah. really partake that yeah to jump I mean, into what hilaire said um i was just reading first samuel 15 verse 23 as well and it even says for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry, right? So it's not like he's just coming up with this on his own, right? You right. see it there. It's, it's, it's so true. It's rebellious. And even to your point in that chapter, um, uh, Matthew, when you go back and you look at how Saul used, um, you know, didn't follow the instructions of the God of Israel, then he came back to... Um, Samuel and Samuel gave that. That was Samuel speaking. And it was so interesting. After Samuel dies, what does Saul do? He goes back to the witch and calls up the spirit of Samuel. So 
Hilarious. You know, it's it's rebellious, as yeah. as a hilarious has stated. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna add then as well that witchcraft can be a confusing word. In English, we tend to use the word with witches or witchcraft in ways that fail to reflect uh, analytic distinction widely present in other cultures, um, even languages as well, believe it or not. And for us Israelites, um, witchcraft is quite self-explanatory in, in the scriptures that we will touch place today. And, and one more thing, one word I forgot to mention that really associates with witchcraft is divination. And those, um, you know, people, particularly in Christianity, you know, children of Jacob who partake and they go and they get their DD in theology. The DD stands for doctrine and divination. So they're divining. You're using crystals. You're using stones. And this, again, is rebellious against our God. So this is what we're talking about here tonight. Um, if, if you actually look at the definition of divination, it is um, it says here the practice of seeking knowledge of the future or the unknown by supernatural means. Wow, that's that that's a good one because basically, I think Elder mentioned on the last lesson that what's the point gaining the world and for you to lose your soul? You understand? So they don't understand. You try to get those extra power, but at the end you're losing your soul. You know, it's it's, it's a good point, there, Matthew. And to, to me, also, it's the ultimate slap in the face to the God of Israel, because we're supposed to be looking to our father. We're supposed to turning back to our God, you know, calling on the name of our God, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and using him. You know, God of Israel is not the God. He's not the he's not the author of confusion. So he already has his mouthpiece, which is the prophets. The prophet would come to the king and would let the king know or let the people know what they needed to do not you know sorcerers or witchcraft or wizards well i think, I think you're maybe, you're, sorry you made a very good point you made a very good point there um like you're saying about it's a slap in the god of israel as face because when 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 you think of witchcraft is people basically ultimately trying to seek power right so they seek sorcery or they seek a witch to try and gain um power but then when you look at the God of Abraham, Isaac, A um, um, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he's the ultimate power. There's no power higher than him. So for you to now, because because when we when we when we think about all these things, he's talking, the God of Israel is always talking to his people, he's always warning his people not to practice these, because we know that the world they practice all mannerism of things. But he's always talking to his people not to practice witchcraft, because when you think of witchcraft, he is the ultimate power. And there's no power higher than he is. So for you to now turn around and say that I'm going to worship something even lower, or that doesn't re represent that power of that highness, do you know what I mean, of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, it is a slap in the God of Israel's face. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's a really good point that you made there. Um, Jonathan, you wanted to say something. Go ahead. Yeah, no, definitely. What you're saying in there as well is a mockery and also is a disrespect because obviously... There's two powers, there's the God of Israel and then there's Satan. So witchcraft is that's Satan's, that's Satan's domain, that's his that belongs to him. But well, with God of Israel, we serve him with the spirit of truth. And with the spirit of truth, there is no form of witchcraft that's involved. Um, but I was also gonna say that um, in the dictionary, witchcraft says that the practice of magic, especially black magic, uses of spells in modern contexts religious practice involving magic and affinity with nature, usually within a pagan tradition and bewitching and fascinating attraction of charm. So there you have it, witchcraft in a dictionary. Yeah, I think I think that's very, very interesting what you're saying there because, you know, most people's perception of witchcraft is obviously going to seek the voodoo man to, to seek some higher power, right? But I mean, it's interesting that in that definition it says paganism, right? When we think of paganism, um, the practice of paganism, if that comes under the, 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 the umbrella of witchcraft, then obviously we understand that obviously we don't do nothing like that, but most people wouldn't perceive that as witchcraft. They wouldn't see paganism as witchcraft. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because when we look at um, obviously people 
celebrating Christmas? What what is what is the act of Christmas? What is the things that they do at Christmas? They have a tree which they decorate it and they put presents underneath that um, that tree. And that tree is a, it's a main focus in the every single household, right? And on, on Christmas Day, everyone kneels beneath that Christmas tree and open their presents, which basically they're bowing down to a form of worship. It's a form of worship. It's a, wor it's a form of worship in a God, right? That has nothing to do with the true and living, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You see what I'm saying? Because that's, that's, that's the imagination of man, you know, always thinking physical here, right? It's not how we serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So that's a very good point there that you made, Jonathan, right? Uh, if I can add, um, um, Brother Kwame here, just a quick point. It's true what he's saying, because basically most people, they don't see that coming. Um, we, in terms of spirituality, Lucifer is very smart. You know, he's very smart, and he knows how he's going to use two tricks, make you think that you, you're not doing witchcraft, but actually you doing witchcraft. He's a very smart being. So he, that's why people fall to the, to the trap, like you mentioned, Christmas, or going to places of worship and they see idol well, I know I'm just I'm just worshiping a God, you know. But for us Israelites, we have to be very careful. That's why the God of Israel in the scripture said, do just do not partake yourself or mix yourself with others because they're gonna take you from me and to worship the other God. So we have to be very, very careful because Lucifer is very smart the way he does things. Yeah, you, you that's a good point there, man. Very, yeah, very just, speaking of Lucifer. You know, that's, you know, where it begins, right? If you read, you go to Isaiah 14, where he wanted to be like God. He wanted to rise above the heavens. So again, to your point that it is a form of power seeking. We see you go into the New Testament, Simon, he wanted that power of the apostles. So he was willing to pay for it. But I know you're going to jump into the scriptures. Yeah. So let's let's go into our, our first scripture. Yeah. Um, I'm going to. Go into the book of Leviticus, right? We're going to start from Leviticus 19 and we go from verse 31. Leviticus 19, verse 31. And it reads, Regard not them that have familiar spirit, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am I'm the Lord your God, right? So that scripture alone, right? First and foremost, um, that's a commandment, right? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is commanding his people. He's only speaking to Israel. That's something that we have to really emphasize. He's talking to his people not to seek familiar spirit, right? Or wizards, mm -hmm. um, because you'll be defiled by them. They will destroy your spirit. You understand? See how we serve the God of Israel is... We have to have a healthy spirit because we can only serve the God of Israel in, 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 in truth and in spirit, right? We have to only serve him in spirit. We don't serve him in a physical way. So our spirit has to be healthy, right, in order to serve him. So by seeking a wizard or speaking a witchcraft is, you, you just can't do both. You understand what I'm saying? It just can't be done. You know what I'm saying? You have to see the God of Abraham, Isaac, because this is, and there's consequences that come with doing that as well. You know, I, I think you also, we spoke prior to the broadcast and you had a really good definition of familiar spirit. I was wondering if you could share that, Kwame. Okay, yeah. yeah. So like a lot of people, out there, a, lot, a lot of you guys watching may not understand when we talk about familiar spirit. When we talk about familiar spirit, we're talking about um, a spirit of old, right? So. The best example that I can give you is just imagine, like, I don't know, your granddad or um, or someone of old dies and the spirit still hangs about, right? And that spirit is seeking, you know, it's going around seeking a body, you know, it's just looking for a vessel to, you know, basically um, use, you know, and that's what, we, that's what we mean by when we talk about familiar spirit. Those spirits are there. So when you see these witches practicing witchcraft or seeking other spirits, those those are familiar spirits. Those spirits are there. Do you know what I'm saying? They're trying to tap into those spirits. 
you know, but that's not of any good. How, you know, connecting to other spirits or uh, spirits of witchcraft is not going to do anything positive or anything good. There's no, nothing good will come out of that. Yeah. You know? and even in the, the scriptures, we see it all the time where, you know, someone might have gone to sought out a familiar spirit and what happens they end up getting in trouble for it something mm -hmm. bad happens right mm -hmm. so or they even tend to anger the god of Israel because we know that these aren't the things that we're supposed to be doing right yes it's a very good point and the other thing i want to mention too is that a familiar spirit is an adopted spirit it's just the opposite of israel we have the spirit of adoption they have an adopted spirit and the spirit of adoption is um, the spirit of adoption, which Israel has, is, is truth. So you can imagine if the adopted spirit would obviously be of the lie. So it's two opposite camps. Yeah, well, I would like to jump in before we were elder everything. Um, it's very interesting because when we talk about infeminine spirit and people don't see what we're trying to say here, I mean, usually those spirits, you're going to seek them from witches is for destruction you know to destroy like a marriage or to gain like jealousy so those unfamiliar spirits will come to you to go do what your lust require for, because your friend or your best friend has a better car or has a better family you're gonna destroy them so people go seek those spirits they'll come to you but we as an israelite we only one spirit we seek the spirit of the truth where it takes faith you know obedience and instruction but the opposite of that, it's a rebellion to go for destruction. And that's exactly what um, we try to say here at the every other grid point. Yeah. Also, yeah. too, I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go on. No, everyone's touching good points here. Um, this all brings my attention to King Saul when um, he was not getting all answers where God of Israel actually rejected him. And um, he was confused. So he was looking for, I guess, refuge and help and um, answers to what to do next. So obviously what he done, which he, he seek the opposite power, which was Satan, but like seeking out the witches, which he actually cast out of Israel. And with that, it's just, it was to show that um, he was very desperate, <laughs> desperate times. And um, he wanted to get that power back, but there was no chance at all whatsoever because he was rejected and cut off. It's su such a good point. Uh, and that, that was one of my scriptures. I don't know if we, we can go there. Can we go there? Yeah, what's, what's the scripture? The scripture is 1 Samuel 28, verse 7. Start at verse 7. Uh, we could go there. First Samuel, yeah, for sure. Twenty-eight, yeah? Yes, verse 7. Verse 7, 28 verse 7, right? Yes, yes. Okay, so uh, where do you want me to read it up to? Um, I'm not sure. I got, I'm, I'm probably just, I'm just. All right, cool. Then said Saul unto his servant, Seek me a woman that have familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said unto him, Behold, there is a woman that have a familiar spirit at Endor. Yes. And so. No, just we see, um, just to give you a backdrop, Saul is trying to inquire of the Lord. He, he's, you know, Samuel already told him that David's going to be the king and things are not right with him. Of course, he had an evil um, spirit. And so he's he's trying to get answers from the God of Israel and God is not answering him. So now he seeks a familiar spirit. So he's going to the God of truth. He can't get this what he wants from the God of truth. So now he goes to seek a familiar spirit. Okay. And so, you know, oh, did sorry. You yeah, well, you quick, right? Because every, every just boy, a great point just came up in my mind. Oh, I'm like speaking fast, fast. Basically, yeah. I remember when the, the, children, uh, the children of Israel, when Moses went to the mountain. So they're seeking us. So what is it? It's taking too long. So they want, they want a straight answer. So what they do, they just build a cow. The Jews build the cow, let's worship the cow. This is witchcraft. This is exactly what we talk about witchcraft. So we just build the cow and it's going to be our God and it's going to answer to us. You see, that's what, that's the mind frame 
of people when they don't have the spirit of the truth, they lose faith, they know patience, they just like want to get things done quickly. Absolutely. Yeah, great, great point. Great point, um, Hilary. You want to read um, some more? So we're going to go to verse 8. Okay. And so disguise himself and put on other raiment. And he went and two men with him. And they came to the woman by night. And he said, I pray thee, divine unto me by the familiar spirit. And bring me him up whom I shall name unto thee. Notice in the beginning I said, when you talk about witchcraft, you also think of the word divination, which comes from what? Divine. So this is what happens when you get that Christian degree and your pastor sits there and they got their DDD <laughs> and they got our book, the book of the Israelites, and they're talking foolishness about Sundays, the Sabbath, it's, uh, putting that cross on your forehead, Ash Wednesday. They're telling you all these pagan practices. It's a witch. Yes. You know, we tend to think about, you know, Haitians and voodoos. But it's the same thing the Catholic priest does, the Christian priest does. So this is absurd. This is what, uh, you know, witchcraft is all about, divining. They try to make it into a good thing. Like they sugarcoat a lot of it, right? So yes. it's like now it's okay to do all these things, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's a great point you made there, Elder Avery. Like I think a lot of people's perception of witchcraft is always about going to seek you know yes. a witch right but then when you kind of look at the practices of what people actually do in terms of worldly worldly things you know it is witchcraft practicing right because they're not they're not because as it talks the scripture talks about familiar spirits because they're seeking familiar spirits because it has nothing to do with the god of abraham isaac and jacob you see what i'm saying so yeah really. and um i would like to just add a quick point here 99 percent of people worldwide without knowing they're using witchcraft and the one person who doesn't do it is israel nation world ministry because we worshiping the true living god the god of abraham Isaac, and jacob because most of the country each country have their own uh, tradition and uh, without knowing it if you go for example i went to brazil they can kill a chicken and put the blood down and you know do their witchcraft and if you go to another country they use a different practice they probably put a wine with some blood or whatever you know it's a different practice but they're doing witchcraft and the one percent left this is serious one percent left worldwide is the israel national worldwide ministry we all worship the true living god and this is really people don't understand where we're coming from because they lucifer has a way to do things on a different area and um unfortunately people fall into the trap yeah you know i was i was watching uh the black panther last night with my wife and daughter and uh you can see a lot of the witchcraft in that movie as well and one of the uh another attributes that they witchcraft involves is calling up the ancestors as we'll see and continue to read it. But I, I thought that was interesting as you see all the witchcraft in, in that movie. And um, we have a tendency, children of Jacob, of talking, hey, let's call up the ancestors. Let's call up the ancestors. That's not biblical. We, we, you read in the book of uh, Leviticus that this was not a practice and that it was it's rebellious towards our father. Yeah. I see uh, like this, right? It's us, Israel. It's like Worldwide Ministries, which is the truth. And you got the world or doing pagan stuff, pagan rituals, which is I say, witchcraft worldwide ministries in a way. So <laughs> that's it. <laughs> They're doing wrong, wrong doings. To bring to um to chime in what uh Hilaire was saying about the world and how like 90% of them don't even realize they're doing witchcraft. Um mm -hmm. If you go into some scriptures, you hear them talking about how they built altars for the hosts of the heavens and stuff like that, right? So the way I see that is they're, you know, worshiping planets, the stars, the moons and the sun and everything like that. So to me, in my mind, when we think about the world's New Year's that happens on, um, what, January 1st or whatever, uh, that right there is like a clear indication because almost everyone does it, right? Everyone um, 
they celebrate what is that is that janice the goddess the yeah, janice. yeah so and it's i don't know it's it, it not a lot of people realize these things and it seems like it's an okay thing to do but in fact clearly it's not something that we do in israel yeah I think you I think you make a good point there, um, Matthew, because I think most people um I get caught up in like the celebration of things, right? Mm-hmm. And it's almost like they're not really looking at the, the 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 actual what they're actually doing. You see what I'm saying? They're not really thinking about the acts of what they're actually doing. Because I think if people to were really to think and focus on what they're actually doing. They will actually see that something's not right or something's not adding up because i mean just just an example of the the, the whole like christmas thing right because they talk about the christmas is all to do the birth of christ but then you have to always look at what what is what celebration are they doing that what 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 indicates is there anything that they do in regards to the christ or jesus the christ yeah what is it is there anything that they do on that day that indicates that they're celebrating the birth of Christ. Do you see what I'm saying? There's nothing there. It's just some kind of ritual where you have a tree, you have all these celebrations. What's that got to do with Jesus? As a matter of fact, one of the main focuses is actually Satan Claus, right? For- <laughs> yes, exactly. That's my point. Like Santa Claus, even presents, yeah. and all that, etc. That has nothing to do with Jesus. Because you ask the children, what are they looking forward to? Oh, the, the, the presents under the Christmas tree. They don't like... You don't hear anything about Jesus. The only time you hear it is when they're trying to tell a story about why Christmas, this, that, and the other. But they can't even tell that, right? Right? So <laughs> yeah. And what everyone says as well, they always say we do it for the kids. So they're trying to justify it. So saying using it for the kids. So they're doing all this pagan practice, which is a form of witchcraft, bound down to the tree while picking up the presents. Ah, oh, this ain't good, man. <laughs> to, 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 Go off of what you're saying there, Jonathan. Um, in some scriptures, you would see that um, they use this word. It's like the, um, they pass the children through the fire, right? So, what? W- from my understanding, it's they're using the children to to also commit these sins, right? So, it's like okay, yeah, Christmas is for the children. It's for the children. So now everyone does it, and it's like it's just. You know, they bring it up in the children and then it just becomes this tradition and then it just keeps going, keeps going, keeps going, keeps going, right? Yeah, yeah basically, basically to... bun the children. That's what they say, bun the children. Yeah. <laughs> it's exactly what an elder, our elder <laughs> said last week in the message about how they do it for the children. And it's one thing that we can all um, come to, you know, an agreement on is that if you do it for the ch- ch- children, the tradition will never die out. So, exactly. you know, so children, that's something to think about. I just want to jump what Matthew was saying, uh, basically, uh, teacher Matthew, pardon me. Um, it's interesting because the world doesn't see that way. When you go to a witchcraft, is to seek other spirits, and sometimes you require you to, to make a sacrifice, right? To sacrifice yeah. one of your bloodline, family, or what, et cetera. But look at the children, you know, uh, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob saying, Teach your children my way. Instruction, commandment, and statute. That's what we do as an Israelite. But the rest of the world, what they do, they take their children, they sacrifice them to, to those Christmas, put in those lies, etc. So their spirit, they're selling the spirit of their children to those nonsense practice. This is witchcraft. We were knowing it. And that's why there's a big difference there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%, 100%. It makes, yeah, I, I, I see the point you're making there, Henry. Um, it, it's a great point because, like you said, as an Israelite, we're, 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 we're charged with teaching our children. The God of Israel from page to page always teach your children because we know that our children are the future. And it's a commandment given to us to teach them the laws, the statutes, and the commandment so they can follow that and can continue to pass on that, 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 um, that message, do you see what I'm saying? Because how how else are they going to know who the true and living God is? And I think something that's quite interesting is that that's really important that I think that, and, and it's something key that every single time I think about like me being an Israelite, 
is that the fact that the laws, the statutes, the commandments were never ever given to the world, right? It was only given to Israel. So, and it says it from page to page. So it's so funny how people seek other things when they're seeking God, they go elsewhere to seek God. The true and living God that created the heavens and the earth can only be found in Israel. He could never be found in any other place, but everyone is looking everywhere else rather than Israel. You see what I'm saying? So when you goes back to what you guys are saying in terms of the practice of witchcraft, right? That's what they're doing. Can, can I read something? Um, so I I was just reading uh, Deuteronomy 18. Just before you go there, one second. Have you, have you finished with the scripture yet? Um, um, how about you? Is that finished or you, you want to go more with that? Um, it was Samuel, first Samuel's. I thought we got up to nine. Um, yeah. Do you want to move on from that? Or um, oh. he, <clears throat> Matthew wants to read, read something. Sure. No, go ahead, Matthew. Go ahead. Oh, Matthew. Okay. So, uh, this, so what I'm going to read here is just basically to show us that, like, even the God of Israel himself, and he, he tells us not to do these things. And I, look, let me just read it so you guys see what I'm saying. Um, so Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 9, that's where I'll start from. Um, when thou art come unto the land, into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire or that uses divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a con consulter, con consult, yeah, with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necro necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord, and because of these abominations, the Lord thy God does drive them out from before thee. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God, for these nations which shall possess hearken unto observers of time and unto diviners. But as for thee, the Lord thy God hath not suffered thee so to do. Right? Great scripture. So I, I see that. I'm just like, wow. Like, how, how can we miss something like this. How can you be of Israel and do those that you can't, right? You can't be of Israel and then do those um, ungodly things, right? Mm -hmm. And what the world's doing, you could clearly see here, it's, this is, it's not allowed, but yet they claim to follow the Bible and use our book to do this, that, and the other. It, it's not right. <laughs> It's a mockery. That's yeah. That's that's uh, that's a good. That's yeah. Great, great, great one, now, Matthew. Um, I wanted to add something to what you said, and and I think is quite is 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 it's in relation to what you've said. But I want to also just kind of um, point out that obviously practicing witchcraft, there is consequences that come with that, right? Um, if you're caught doing it as an Israelite, I mean the world does it, but like us, we've always said, it's, this is always pertained to the children of Israel. Nothing to do with the world. But we can teach the world how to serve the true and living God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And it's not seeking witches, right? So I'm going to read, I'm going to go into the book of Leviticus, uh, back in the, the book of Leviticus. I'm going to go to chapter 20, and I would read verse 6, right? So chapter 20, verse 6. And, and it says, and the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits and after wizards to go warring after them, I will even set my face against that soul and will cut him off from among his people. Sanctify yourself, therefore, and be ye holy, for I am the Lord your God, and you shall keep my statutes and do them. I am the Lord which sanctify you. So 
straight away it goes back to what we were saying. This is a commandment. The God of Israel is commanding his people, right? But also there's a consequences to doing, not keeping the law statutes command or seeking familiar spirits. As he says here, he will cut him off from among his people and he will set his face against that soul. That's big stuff there, man. That's deep. You know what I mean? Why would you why would you even think about it? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Why would you even think about that? You know what I mean? It's also also implies or you know um <clears throat> states that to to partake in these practices is unholy. So yes. you're sanctifying yourself, you're holy. And it's yes. an abomination is bigger than a sin. It's yes. like the ultimate sin. So he hates, he absolutely hates this. Yeah. So, and it's, uh, of course, has to do with unholiness. Yes. yes. To the point, um, Brother Kwame, you were saying, um, it's very, very interesting because it shows again that as a as us, as an Israelite, we have to stay in unity with family. Because as long as you start moving left and right, you get a, you get a, a trap by those wrong practice. It could be, you know, like work, work or friends outside of the nation so you get to you get attached to those to those kind of environment then they will lure you to practice the wrong things so the more we attach to ourselves as a, in a unit as a family the more you have a chance not to get running away from the truth and this is very important for us to really to stick together and make sure that we stay with divine it's funny you say that Hilary, because a lot of the times people who hang like you know to surround themselves by those um type of paganisms and stuff like that they don't even realize that they're slowly drifting away and then eventually now they're gonna think oh yeah it's okay to celebrate christian oh yeah it's okay to do this oh yeah and then you know next thing you know they know nothing about israel because they you know slowly yeah. drift apart absolutely yeah, yeah. definitely definitely because um literally just entertaining um evil spirits witchcraft as well going back to Saul as well think about it Saul was rejected but now that he went to mm -hmm. seek refuge and help from a witch he was actually cut so he's pretty much done he's finished now like he's finito he's like that's it like and there's no coming back from that really and truly because yeah. like it's just a, it's just a spit in the god of his face like because you're desperate you want to go do that but nah that's a big no-no yeah. The other thing, thing, too, is that this is law. And they say, what do they say? There's no more law. Can you imagine? So that means we can have witchcraft. We can have uh, uh, necromancers. Those are people who worship the dead. We can have wizards because this is the law. Yeah. And you know, um, I was going to say that this thing is very common within the children of Jacobites is a very common practice with our people, right? Um, I think um, back home, back in Africa, when you, it is something that people practice quite a lot, witchcraft, in, in terms of actually seeking to destroy somebody. Do you understand what I'm saying? Out of jealousy, someone be jealous of somebody will seek witchcraft to want that person, what the person has, right? To destroy that person is something very common within our people. And I think that, you know, um, just reading the scripture, just seeing that the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, is a commandment for him. Not only is it a commandment, but we know that he wants good for his people, right? So, all his commandments is for our own benefits when you think about it, right? Everything that he's put there is, is for our own benefit. Do you understand what I'm saying? You know, we will benefit from keeping the commandments. Do you understand what I'm saying? So um, I think it's quite interesting to see that this kind of practice is very common within our people. It's almost like they want that power and they will do whatever they have to do to seek that power, right? They will go to the witch or familiar spirit to seek that power. Do you see what I'm saying? But the true power, the true power is always the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
return to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is this is this is the only power that you need in your life. You, you know what I'm saying? There's no power higher than Him. So why would you then seek something that's below? You know. Yeah, one thing I would like to add um, to the point uh, Brother Kwame was saying, you know, as a father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he wants the best for his children. You know, he, as a parent, I understand that if you really love your children, you want the best for you, the best from them. And this witchcraft thing, people don't understand, like like they are all practiced from different area. Could be in Africa, could it be in Caribbean. Some parents, they take their children for the young age, you know, they probably introduce them to an old uncle, I don't know what kind of practice he does, you know, but that child, when you grow up in the future, there's a bad, there's a spirit attached to that person and could yeah. damage that person individually, you know, without even knowing, you feel, oh, what happened? Why does all things happen to me? But you don't know what your parents did in the past when you were young as an innocent child, you know, those practice would destroy the person's soul in the future. but you can see the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as our father. He wants the best from us. And for, for, the, for us to get the best from him, so we have to, he said, look, this is my instruction. This is my commandment. If you follow this instruction, you get the best wine. You get the best, uh, let's say, the best honey. Anything you want, you get it. Like in uh, Deuteronomy 28, 29, you know. So it's very important to understand that as a parent, we want the best for our child. And as I have a son, the best for me is to show him the God, the way of the God of ever as I can Jacob. But this is the situation where people don't understand what's witchcraft. And there's a lot of damage being done, being done from Jacobite, from you know the roots, from our ancestor, all those, you know, exchanging things they, like gifts spiritually. It's it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy out there. And and I don't wanna make it sound like we're repeating ourselves, but um just going back to when we were we were talking about the power that people want, right? And they want it instantly, like right away. And they don't have the patience because many times in the Bible, we see stories of, okay, yeah, the other side did this, but the, but the God of Israel did this. Okay, but the, the other side tried to match that, but the God of Israel, like, you know, and it's almost like the God of Israel, it's like he wants to show his power in a way where it's like, okay, yeah, they could do these things, but it's like he's going toe to toe with them. But then he's like, okay, you see that they could do this, but watch this. And then he does something completely out of the water, and like these guys are like, like blowing back. And it, we've seen it many times where even the other side, they see what the God of Visual could do, and it's like they run to our side, and it's like, oh, yeah, we got to worship the God of Visual because. You know, our side can't even do stuff like that, right? So it's <laughs> it, it's it amazes me sometimes when I see these stories. Um, I think one of the stories that I can even think of that is um, like when Elijah and the prophets of Baal. I think that's the one. Yeah. I'm gonna get into it right right now, but yeah. yeah. It's a good topic. It's a good topic. Even um, um, even like. The story of Jesus, man. I mean, I think we can go to that scripture, man, and read that. I mean, the, the, the time when um, Jesus Jesus was tempted by Satan. Um, let's go into that scripture and we'll talk about that one. So um, we're going to go into the book of um, Luke and we will go to chapter four and we're going to read from verse four, right? And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, that a man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil, talk, taking him up into an high mountain, shoot onto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will give it to. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and in and him only shall thou serve. You know, that that that's a great scripture. When I read that, that kind of you know 
confirm what we're saying in terms of, you know, witchcraft practices or familiar spirits, right? As you can see, Satan himself is tempting Jesus, right? But he will give him the whole world. You see what I'm saying? All he has to do is worship him. So if Jesus is, sorry, if Satan is prepared to do tempt Jesus in that manner, what is he doing to mankind? Think about what the world, what position the world is sitting in. He's given the world all these things because at the end of the day, a lot of people have this um, understanding that only God can bless. They have this understanding, only God can bless, but they don't understand that Satan also can bless. You know, he's tempted the world with all these things, right? If they worship him. You know, so I'm saying, and the world, the world has fallen for it. They have fallen for that. You see what yeah. I'm saying? I would say blessing. I don't know. I, he's he has the power to give. Um, right. Yeah, he has the power to give. So you know, as he said in that scripture, he has the power to do all that. And you see, you see that in 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 the music industry. You see it in the entertainment industry, where yeah. people um, do things behind closed doors in secrecy, and then the next thing you know, bam, they're at they're 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 unstoppable in terms of uh, being number one. Whether it be movies, whether it be music, um, whatever the entertainment is, they rise to the top. But we don't know what's uh, transpires behind closed doors. Right, right, right. It's a great point. It's a great point. A lot of yeah. sacrificing and rituals are, so they say, that are going on back there. <laughs> and also the certain power. It's a short term. It's never, never for a long term. It's a short term. Then you give it to you. Then you take it back and you destroy you. Compared to the our God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, is for everlasting one. That's the difference between those two. You know, I always, I always think about the scripture that says, "What profit a man uh, if he gains the whole world and loses his soul?" So our elder has always taught us that the most important thing is your spirituality, because your flesh, as he, he mentioned, I got to go back and look at last week's mm -hmm. message. As he mentioned, that you know, your flesh can't speak to you in that different dimension. When we sleep with the Father, when we die, um, it's not your flesh, it's your spirit. So I thank my uh, God for my elder, for the knowledge he's given. When, even when you talk about familiar spirits, um, the, the culture that he has introduced to this nation, mm -hmm. what we do when we get new homes. Um, and people may not believe, you know, haunted homes or familiar, you know, homes that have spirits within them. But you know what's interesting to me, in certain states throughout the United States, in the real estate market, um, if the uh, real estate agent is selling a home and someone dies in the home and the buyer asks, hey, has anyone died in the home? The real estate agent has to let the buyer know, hey, someone died in the home. I thought that was interesting because, wow, um, it's really talking about familiar spirits, right? Mm -hmm. Talking about <laughs> familiar spirits and it exists and it's on the law books in many states. So that was interesting to me. And I, well, I'm just to make it all the connections. Thank God for my elder for giving us this culture so that we understand what a familiar spirit is and to understand that we were given the spirit of adoption and that we're, we know what we're supposed to do as Israelites. Thank you. Definitely, definitely. 100%, 100%. Okay, so um, I think we go to another scriptures, um, unless you guys got anything else to add to that. Um, but I think it was a great point in terms of, I think you said something, um, Elder Avery, about um, blessings. Like you said, in terms of what Satan does give, mm -hmm. that he can give you something, but you wouldn't see it as a blessing. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. And also you making that link that, you know, your spirit, when you say your spirit, right? Not your soul, your spirit. You said your spirit, right? The elder elder has always taught us that your spirit is the most important thing, right? Yes, absolutely. Spirituality is the most important thing because this is the whole, when we die, that's the end of our flesh. As he said in last week's message, your yeah. body dies, the worm eats it up. You know, the bones are very important. We know as Israelites, of course, but it's the spirit. The spirit that moves the body. The right. Mm -hmm. exactly. Exactly. 
So, so yeah, great points. Great points there, guys. So um, move on to the next scripture, um, which is Galatians. Um, Galatians 5. Um, uh, we're going to come to, we're going to go from verse 16. Um, I, I think this um, scriptures, you know, really, well, let, let's go into it before we go in, uh, before we talk about it. But uh, we're going to start from verse 16 and we're going to go all the way to 27. So Galatians 5, uh, we go from verse 16. Okay, so it says, this I say then, walk in the spirit. And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that ye would. But if you be led of the spirit, you are under the law, right? So it, it, this is really, really, um, it's really interesting here, man. Um, it goes back to what you were saying, Albert Avery, in terms of how important your spirituality is, because the spirit that the, the scripture here is saying that the spirit is against the flesh, right? Mm -hmm. They can't work together. Mm -hmm. You know, you can only be led by the spirit, right? Um, but I guess when you think of the the flesh, you have to seek, you know, giving in to the flesh. You know, all these things that people do and all these practices that people do is given into the flesh. You know, this is what the flesh is seeking you to do, to seek these things, to come away from that spirit, that true spirit of the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Right. Um, and I think the key thing that I take here is that they don't work. You can't if you're someone of Israel, like an Israelite, I cannot go and seek a sorcery or a witch. I cannot do that. Do you see what I'm saying? Because that's going against my beliefs. That's going against my practices. That's going against my God. Do you see what I'm saying? So the two cannot work together, you know? And as even you, you mentioned about, you know, when we sleep, um, we go into that realm where we, we, we can only communicate with our, our, our forefathers um, through the spirit, you know what I mean? We cannot do that through the flesh because the flesh disappears once you pass, you know? So it's so important too, because this spirit is a capital S. So this is a very unique spirit. I think you mentioned Kwame, it's of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And you cannot serve man and a God and mammon. So it's two camps. It's the spirit of truth. We serve the God of truth and everyone else is in that other realm or the other camp. Even if you say you're an atheist, by virtue that you deny my God, that puts you into that camp. So it's, you know, it's, and it's tough. Again, it makes me think of the scripture. Um, what's the scripture where it says, uh, um, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. It's weak. So it's always that battle. It's always the battle. You know, you're dealing with the flesh and what the world has to offer. When you turn on the news, they make things that are worldly so attractive. You, yes. you look at the cemetery, it always looks beautiful, right? The lawns are neatly manicured. It's beautiful when you look at it, but it's not for Israel. It's for the world. Right, right, really. And I think another key thing here that I really thought was spot on here that, but if you be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. Now, mm -hmm. that is, you are basically, you. if you're being led by the spirit, you're basically, you are the law, right? <laughs> you, know truth. <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying? If you're being led by the spirit, you're going to do spiritual things. You're going to do holy things if the spirit is leading you. Right. But if you're led by the flesh, you're going to do things like go and seek a sorcery or go and see a witch in order to get higher power. But if you're led by the spirit, you know, you, you, you this is greatness, man. Yeah, we're, 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 we're talking about the true and living God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the one that created all things, right? He's leading you. Where And, and, and it goes back to what um, Hilaire was saying about, you know, the God of Israel is a father, 
and he's a father to his children. And what does he want from his father as a parent? You only want good things for your parent, for your children, right? So you're going to lead them to good things. You're not going to lead them to a bad place. You're going to lead them to a good place, right? So, you know, being led by the spirit, you know, by our father is a great thing, man. I, I just love, I love that. I love that. You know, and it makes me think my connection is when the children of Israel were led by that, you know, pillow of fire, night, the cloud. So mm -hmm. that spirit is leading them that more physical, mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. that works in that, you know, just that connection. I just wanted to make that connection as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So many yeah. other examples in life where, you know, and in the scriptures where that we are led by the spirit. But one of the things that keeps, you know, I keep hearing is elder. Elder's message last week is the world is deaf. They're not only deaf, they're blind. They can't, when they read it, they can't see what we see. They can't hear what we hear no. because they're not, they have a different spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it's that, even it's saying, see no evil, speak no evil, and hear no evil. <laughs> With us, Israelites, we serve in the God of Israel, which is tr truth. And we walk in the ways of our forefathers. So obviously, we do things. Spiritually, we're a spiritually organization, let's be real, with ourselves. And um, at the outside world, they're like the walking dead, so to speak. It's like they just doing things freely, like doing witchcraft freely, believe it or not. Like the Christmases, the Easter's, it looks very attractive, per se, to them. But that's not the case if you think about it deep down. There's an ugly side to it. And unfortunately, they'll pay for it as well. The best example for that one halloween <laughs> oh gosh it's clearly double worshiping but what it's fine it's definitely <laughs> yeah. everyone everybody keeps that and everyone everybody keeps that and the, the weird thing about it is a lot of people will say to you that they're not religious right <laughs> uh, or even the ones that probably still keep it <laughs> When Halloween comes, you see them get their costume, you know, and they go out there and buy their costume and they're out there, you know, um, with their costume. You know, it's a day out for them. It's a night out for them. You know what I mean? It's a celebration for them. You see what I'm saying? And, and a lot of them do know the history behind it, but a lot of people will kind of like put a spin on it and say, well, you know, it meant something different, but it means something different now. But what they don't seem to understand is they're not really understand. The spiritual, yeah, they're not understanding that the spiritual part of that side of it. They might be only just thinking the physical side of it, but when you're entertaining that, what spirit are you entertaining? Mm -hmm. Definitely yep. not the spirit of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You're not, you're not, you're not, you're not entertaining that. You're entertaining other spirits when you're doing those things, when you're keeping them things. Because we know when we keep the law, statutes, and commandment, you know, we're being led by the spirit, right? Yep. But with these people, they're doing what they're doing. They're not really thinking about the spiritual aspects of it. They just think, oh, man, I'm just doing what I'm doing. I'm going out with my family. What could be so wrong about me taking my children out to go and see bonfire or to go and see the fireworks? That's not a bad thing. But they don't understand. They just don't get it. You see what I'm saying? They don't get it. Um, That's a great point, though. I'm surprised we didn't bring Halloween up earlier, but... Why do they put on the costumes? You know why they put on the costumes? It's the physical thing that we see, but they put on this costume to take on this, the behavior of a witch or, a, I don't know, a, a, a Frankenstein or whatever, right? Their behavior change. And that's the whole thing about a spirit, right? The spirit's role is to influence your behavior. When you drink spirits, wine, when you drink enough of it, right? We get drunk. That's this right. is why we don't drink wine when we worship our father. That's but right. the whole thing of Halloween is there. there it's uh, uh, necromancy, right? They're calling the dead out. The dead is out. They, they come into their homes. They come into their, they're using their, their bodies to make them behave a certain way. Exactly. Yeah, there's, a, there's one point here. Um, it's true every, every way saying. Um, that's why our elders always teach us to, our spirit to be strong. Our spirit will be very strong because those and family spirits they need your body they need your body to do whatever they want to do so sometimes you, 
you, you watch the news and these poor women crying, oh, but my son was a good son, you know, I don't understand, how can you go and, you know, do this, do that, but there's a spirit that went to that child and make him do what he, what he did. So it's very important for us to stay very spiritually as a strong we can, so we can avoid and overrule all those uh, family spirit, try to uh, connect to you, try to influence you to bad behavior. You know, it's, 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 it's true. Eh? Like pff, Halloween. Right, come Very sad. Okay, cool. That's, that's great. That's a great point, Hilaire, that you made. That's really good. Excellent. So um, we carry on from the scripture. So we, we are about 18, so I'll just read from 18 onwards. Um, but if you be led by of the spirit, you are under the law, right? You are not under the law, right? Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, 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 witchcraft, hatred, variance, immolations, wrath, strife, sedations, heresies. I mean, there's quite a lot there, right? Um, you know, it's quite interesting adult look because a lot of the times people's or people's understanding of adultery is something completely different from what the Bible's saying, right? Now, when you're looking at here saying that the works of the flesh, right? And under that comes adultery, right? Fornication, right? This is all to do with the services of serving different gods, right? And it all comes down to what we've been talking about. It's all in terms of familiar spirits, you know, seek other spirits that is not of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And then coming to the conclusion that you're serving God, right? And it goes on, right? So um, uncleanness, right? Or well, that's to define as being holy and unholy, right? And then you've got Idolater, um, idolatry, that's the worship of, uh, um, images. sorry, say that again. I said graven images and stuff like that. Graven images, yes. Like, for example, as we know, when Moses went up to the mount and the children of Israel decided to worship the golden calf, right? They couldn't wait, they had no patience, so they decided to carve out a golden calf, make that golden calf and worship and worship that as their god right or the uh, christmas tree or the cross yeah or the stone or the you know the um the cube right which is the cross yeah exactly Definitely. these the are all the stars <laughs> the star <laughs> yes 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 these are all forms of witchcraft you know even hatred, man. It says the word hatred is actually, you know, um, these are things that um, that manifests as the flesh manifests. This is what we. This is this is common with. I mean, the world. I mean, the world talks a good talk. You know, the world will talk that you know everything's about love, right? But when you look deep down and look at the way that the world is structured and the way the world is moving, there is no love anywhere. Where's the love? <laughs> there's no love anywhere, man. But they talk that there's love everywhere and everyone believes in this love, love, love. But that that there's love, love is unconditional. Do you see what I'm saying? But love has to be conditional. Do you see what I'm saying? Because if I'm going to love somebody or somebody going to love you, they have to... There has to be rules to that. You see right. what I'm saying? You can't just do anything you want. You can't just say, look, I'm going to love you and do A, B, and C or do all these things. You understand what I'm saying? There has to be rules to the love because as we know, there's, you know, there's tough love. You know what I'm saying? When your children go wrong, you have to put them right. You know, by 
you know, putting punishment in place. You, you understand what I'm saying? To correct them. Not because you want to hurt your children, but to correct them, to make sure, to know that, look, this is wrong. I mean, look look what happened to Manasseh when um, he started, you know, what happened? He was, um, he ruled over uh, Jerusalem, was it? And, but he had evil in him and he started talking to all these, um, you know, doing all these witchcraft and these other rituals that actually angered the God of Israel. And what did the God of Israel do? He brought, I can actually go to the chapter now, but basically he brought people of um, Assyria to come take Manasseh. Mm -hmm. And when they took him, they basically, uh, I would have to go to the chapter. I believe it's uh, Second Chronicles. Yeah, go, go for it. Go for it, man. Read yeah, it. Okay. Okay. Second yeah. Chronicles 33. Okay, yes. So I'm going to read it real quick. Um, I hope I don't take long on it, but I'm, I'm going to probably skip some parts. Just the, I'm going to get like the more important parts that I want to get. That's cool. That's cool. We, got, we got time anyway. So, so yeah. NASA was 12 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 50 and five years in Jerusalem, but did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, like unto the abominations of the heathen, whom the Lord has cast out before the children of Israel. For he built again the high places which Hezekiah his father had broken down, and he reared up altars of Balaam, and made groves, and worshipped all the hosts of heaven, and served them. Also, he built altars in the house of the Lord, where what the Lord has said in Jerusalem shall my name be forever. And he built altars for the hosts of the heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord. And he caused his children to pass through the fire in the valley of the son of Hinnom. Also, he observed times and used enchantments and used witchcraft and dealt with familiar spirits and with wizards. He wrought much evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. And he set a carved image, the idol which he had made, and in the house of God, which God has set unto David and Solomon his son, in his house, in this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen before all the tribes of Israel, will I put my name forever. Neither will I any more remove the foot of Israel from out of the land which I have appointed for your fathers, so that I'll make heed to do all that I have commanded them. So basically, you could, from what we've already discussed today, you've seen everything that he's done. It was a complete no, right? Uh, it's, I don't know, that that's a lot of evil he was doing there, right? And it's like, it's like he slaps the God of Israel in his face and says, hey, like, this is what I'm going to do right now. And, you know, the God of Israel has to, he has to correct that, right? Because that's his child. So what does he do? I'm going to skip down to, um, I think, verse. Okay, I'm going to skip down to, to verse 9. So Manasseh made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to err and to do worse than the heathen, whom the Lord had destroyed before the children of Israel. And the Lord spake unto Manasseh and to his people, but they would not hearken. Wherefore the Lord brought up the captains of the host of the king of Assyria, which took Manasseh among the thrones and bonded him with fetters and carried him to Babylon. And when he was in affliction, he besought the Lord his God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers, and prayed unto him, and he was entreated of him, and heard his supplication, and brought him again to Jerusalem into his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord was, he was God. Right? So, just looking at that, you could see, okay, the transition. He was doing all these things, like we talked about the power, you know, he was probably getting all these like, you know, getting all these wishes and, you know, he was comfortable with what he was doing. The God of Israel didn't like it. And 
what happened? The god of Rizzo had to go punish his child by sending the other side to come get him. And, you know, until Manasseh realized what was going on, what did he quickly do? He prayed to his god because at the end of it all, he knows who was the more powerful, yeah. um, what's, who, was, who had more power, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a great. You know, it's a great, great scripture. Um, it shows one to me, like you know, he knew, he knew that it was wrong, and in our lowest state, or in his lowest state, he was, he turned back to the God of Israel. It reminds me of Samson, you know, when he was told not to give his secret, he gave his secret out to the heathen, and this is one of the reasons why the God of Israel told the children of Israel, as you go into the land, make sure you kick out the heathens, lest they turn their gods to your daughters and their sons. And this is what's happening today. The children of Jacob, we're turning, we're following. We're supposed to be the priests. The role of the priest is to teach. And when you see the world in so much chaos, when you see all of the atrocities that happen to the world, it's because we, Israel, has not stepped up. We haven't kept the commandments. We haven't turned back to our God. We haven't been the priesthood that we were supposed to be, but thank God for Elder Shadrach. For turning that all around just want to remind the people i just want to remind people um if you <laughs> like what you're hearing please don't forget to share the video and subscribe and um if you want to know more about us just uh reach out to israel nation war ministry and definitely be someone there to help you out and answer all your questions yeah going back to that scripture that he was going through or um teacher matthew yeah, um that was that was uh, second chronicles 33 yeah it shows that there was a bit of stubbornness as well there which is a form of actual witchcraft and um yeah 100%. being stiff naked people is always but we've been a trait of our people where we've been stubborn where we don't want to serve the god of israel the we meant like we was told to, um, to serve him like follow instructions we like to do the opposite which don't make yeah. sense especially with the things that we gone through in the past where we've been rescued by a god of israel so many times but we choose to be stubborn stiff neck time after time it's just evil wickedness in a bit of his eyes yeah yeah and also it meant to the point like it's really the the people attitude you know we're so greedy and patient you know and we think like okay i want to get things done quickly so i'm just gonna go worship those false gods i made i make it whatever i want by the end that's gonna take you to death you know with the god we serve the god of abraham Isaac, and jacob you have to be first of all it's faith you know, it's your faith and patience, and you will see how great it is when you're fully on your, you're fully seeking the way he wants you to do it, and it's amazing. There's no comparison, and most of us they just we like, okay, you know what, this is take too long, but it's all about faith. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent, man. I definitely agree that your your faith plays a massive part. You know, what I mean, um, in terms of you actually you know staying in your lane you know believing in what who you are understand that you are a child of god the most high and that he has rules right and the rules are only there to benefit us you know what i mean they're not to go against us by keeping the rules we actually benefit from that you see what i'm saying so it's a really good point there so i think we have something like 10 minutes left so i'm going to just finish off uh, the scripture, we were at verse 21, uh, reading Galatians 5, verse 21. So going on from there, it says, Envying, murderous, drunkenness, re revealings, and such like of that which I tell you before, as I have also told you in the time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So it you know, it's, it's, it's really clear, like it's talking about envy, right? Murderers, you know, when people seek witchcraft, why are they, why are they seeking witchcraft? Either they're envying something or envying somebody and or to murder somebody is because they want what they have, right? So it all comes down to that witchcraft, right? Or even so, greed, right? Uh, even greed as well. Yeah. And funny if you're saying greed, First person that comes to my head is Judas with the situation with Jesus where he betrayed him. 
Yes, 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 yes. You Jesus, yes, yes. Because obviously money was exchanged, right? But it goes deeper than that, obviously, because he had these things in his heart as well. And obviously these things were supposed to happen. It was supposed, it was destined to happen. It was prophesied. He was fulfilling what was supposed to happen. But yes, 100%. So um, going on to 22, but the fruit of the spirit, right? This is the good things. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith. And it goes back to what you were saying, Hilaire, about faith. You know, faith plays a part in all of it. Without your faith, how are you going to do any of these things? Right? Who are you serving without your faith? If your faith is there and you're strong, solid, it goes back to what Saul had to go and seek a witch because his faith was dead. You know, he lacked faith. If he had the faith in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he wouldn't have done that. You see what I'm saying? You know, so yes, faith definitely plays a big part in it. Um, and it says here, the fruit of the spirit of love is joy and peace. Yes, joy and peace. You know, these are all things that if we stick to the path, that we've been given and the instructions that we've, if we follow these instructions, we will, re we will receive all these joy, peace. And it says long suffering because we know that we're going to be tempted. You know, we have to keep working at this. This is not, we're not playing the short term game. We're playing a long, long term game where, you know, we have to keep, keep representing the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, right? Gentleness, like, always kind of, you know, being um, um, being kind to your brethren, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, we're all going to make mistakes, right? And sometimes we see our, our brethren, you know, um, go wrong. It's just, just being supportive, right? Rather than being angry and being, you know, being harsh, you know, um, be gentle, you know, goodness and faith, you know, um, meekness, being having humility, you know. Um, so it says a meekness, temperance against such there's no against that against such there's no law, right? Against such there's no law, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affection and lust. And if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory provoking one another, envying one another. Great scripture here, man. You know, great, great, great scripture. And I love this because I think the, the key for me here, that I, I, the one thing that I see very, very important is um, meekness and faith, right? These are very key attributes that we need. You know, being, being humble, you need humility. You see what I'm saying? And it goes back to that, I have to mention that soul story, soul story, that instead of him humbling himself, yes, he was given instructions to do A, B, and C, but he didn't keep those instructions. And he, when he was told about it, he should have humbled himself, but he didn't, right? Yeah. What did he want? He wanted, to, he wanted that power back. He wanted more. With a quick exactly. fix. Want to see that quick power back. Said, you know, he wanted it. You know, one, 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 one. You see what I'm saying? But you didn't follow the instructions that was given to you. Right? So, in so certain situations in our lives, we have to learn to humble ourselves. You understand what I'm saying? Even when we're right, there's times, there's going to be times when we're right. But, you know, it's better to humble yourself. That humility, right? Yeah. That humility is better to humble yourself than to say, uh, I'm gonna puff yourself up and puff your chest up to say, Look, I'm right because I'm right, I'm gonna behave in all these mannerisms that he's talking about here. Do you see what I'm saying? Because that's how you get caught up in all these situations when you've humble yourself and you keep yourself, you know, and you keep your faith and understand who you are 
as an Israelite who you serve, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you know, you're always going to keep to that path, you know. And it's so interesting when you look at, you know, the things that we're told to keep and like how I go back to saying that it always keep us, not only keep us grounded, but it keeps us on the right path. But by keeping these attributes, you see what I'm saying? It keeps us on that straight and narrow path. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so... Um, those, yeah, are good. You know, those are good points and great attributes too. And when I think my connection, personal connection is, um, we always talk about staying connected with brethren. So when I stay connected with my brethren, it helps me to stay on the correct path. You know, it helps me to do the right thing. And when you're alone, you know, that's why maybe the scripture says two or more gathered in thy name. Mm -hmm. So being a part of your brother and edifying your brother and also helps you to refrain from or to go on down the wrong path. That's my personal connection. OK, so, so I want to yeah. add something Ken, as well, yeah. um, which Elder always says that this journey is not easy, but it's all about endurance to the end. So enjoy this journey. And um so, we have to give this with our brethren and um, enjoy this to the very end, not till tomorrow, not till an hour, so to the end when we finish. And that's it for me. It's the long game, man. It's the long game. Yeah. <laughs> so, guys, um, we're coming to the end. I think we've got less than five minutes. You guys want to just give, obviously, some of you giving your views, but let's just give your, your last words um, to conclude this lesson. So, for me, I'm always going to continue to say this. Always begin from your position of strength. Um, Matthew gave a great uh, uh, scripture in Manasseh, and he was following. We're not followers. God of Israel has already given us our prescription. If we stay within that spirit, which is the spirit given to us by the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we can't fail. So always begin from your position of strength. Our spirit, our God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is our strength. So let us stay there. Thank you, Elder Avery. Yeah. Um, uh, my last word will be more. Hello. This road is not for the weak. You know, it's not for the weak. It's for the strong. And as long as, as an Israelite, you have to stay strong, keep the faith, the instruction we receive from Elder Shadrach and the Supreme Council, keep that faith and don't be impatient. Follow the other gods because you think that they're going to give you something extra. At the end, it's going to be death. So just keep your faith. Stick the, with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This road is not for the weak, but it's for the strong. And my last words are to remember who is the more who is more powerful, and that is the God of Israel. The God of Israel gets you through anything that you are struggling for, that you are struggling through. And you know, all it takes is prayer, worship, and keeping the commandments, right? Keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. And once you are able to do all that, the God of Israel is always going to be on your side. He would never leave you to, to the other side, unless that's where you want to go, right? But at the end of it all, <laughs> the God of Israel is he's the greatest God there is. He has Man. all the power that you, that you need to be seeking. <laughs> Yeah, I want to say, yeah, I want to say as well that us Israelites, our job is to be the priest unto the world, and that's still in effect today. So, for us to be going to any form of power which is unknown, um, that is not what the God of Israel is instructed. Bear in mind, He's our Father, so we're His children. So, we have any problems that we've got, we've got to go straight to Him because He will rectify it, He will. It, we are us to the end as long as we put our faith in him and trust in him and that's it for me okay so basically um today's lesson really guys is for us to really kind of edify you in terms of you know that there's only one true source which is the god of abraham isaac and jacob and if you're not serving the god of abraham isaac and jacob then you need to um assess your situation because he's the only true and living source and all, only true, true and living God, right? So anything else is worshipping, is witchcraft, basically. Anything else is witchcraft. If you're not serving the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you're serving, you're, you're worshipping 
familiar spirits, right? So we hope that you guys have got a lot from this lesson or you've taken something from this lesson. You know, our main message really, guys, is to that, you know, there's one God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and he has one people, right? So in order for you to serve him, you have to go to his people in order to, to have this knowledge, this understanding, you know, not to seek, you know, other um um, 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 other ritual or, um, or to go and seek a witch or, or or to practice other religion because there's only one true religion everything else is a philosophy you know, mm -hmm. as always been taught by our elder, you know there's only one true religion which is the religion which is the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob which is Israel, that's it, end of story full stop so um, with that guys thank you for your time um, I'll like to peace everyone and um, have a great day. Peace. Peace. Peace.